Hi everyone, welcome back to the garden. It's a chilly day here, it's also really gloomy too. But I suppose now we're just over a week away from the shortest day of the year when we can start kidding ourselves that brighter, sunnier weather is just around the corner. But last night we had a minus one, which meant that all the puddles frosted over in the garden, water turned to ice. As you can see behind me, the riciness, that's certainly seen the last of its days this year now, and that'll be chopped down and put onto the compost heap. Next to that, we've got the Trekkerpus fortunii, the palm there, which is absolutely full of berries this year. That's looking fantastic, and it's a plant that certainly isn't affected by these temperatures. But today, I want to look at another palm, probably my top recommended palm for UK gardens. It's not the fortunii, but it is very similar. But before I tell you about my top recommended palm for UK gardens, I thought to tell you about my favourite cold hardy palm. It's the Jubea chilensis, the Chilean wine palm. It's an absolutely fantastic plant, and even at this size, it's got real presence in the garden. It's got foliage that works well with the other exotics, like the monkey puzzle there, the echiums, pretty much anything goes well with this Jubea. It's got a really angular look to it, a beautiful sort of olive green colour, nice matte finish to it. It's a fantastic plant, and the palm that really sets off that whole exotic garden vibe. But the problems with Jubea are firstly that it grows very slowly. It takes a long time to get any sort of height. A plant like this is just over 20 years old. I've owned it for about five years now. Now it's actually been finely planted out in the ground, it should pick up a little bit, but it's still definitely not a fast grower. So it's certainly gonna take its time to really put on size. And also they're a plant that gets absolutely massive. So a plant like this is going to come out more and send out bigger leaves over this way before it actually starts to get tall. So it's potentially going to be a plant that could absolutely dominate a smaller garden. They're a very tough plant, very hardy, and they're probably the hardiest feather palm you can grow here in the UK or other cold climates. But unfortunately, it is still only the hardiest feather palm. So temperatures around minus 10, maybe a bit lower. I've not really tested this one yet, but hopefully we don't see anything lower than that. So a plant like this, although it can take decent cold, the reality is feather palms in general in the UK, they're not the toughest palms. So the plant I want to tell you about is even tougher than this. It doesn't take up as much room and it grows faster too. It's a win-win really. Without further ado then, my top recommended palm for most UK gardens, it's this one here, a Trachycarpus wagnerianus, or Waggy for short. Waggy is definitely a better name, so we'll stick with using that. I think this Waggy, it's an absolutely fantastic plant, and it certainly brings that exotic vibe. Here, I've got it with tree ferns and all the other jungle planting, and it really fits in, it really has that jungle theme. But even if you haven't gone fully in on the jungle or tropical look, it's certainly a plant that can bring so much to your garden. I think it'd work really well in a Mediterranean style garden, or maybe paired with a bamboo or an acer, it gives you that Japanese kind of vibe. Equally, if you've got a small garden, then something like this, it brings a lot of winter interest, where you get these fans staying dark green and bold all the way through the year. So it's really a plant that brings so much, and in today's video, I want to look at five reasons why I think it's the best palm for UK gardens. The first reason then, well technically it's two but I'll lump them in together, is that it's a very tough and very easy plant to grow. Firstly, the toughness, you want to know if you're spending good money and buying any kind of exotic plant, something a bit different for your garden, that it's not going to just die come the first bit of winter cold. And the good news is that waggies, they are a very tough plant. Frost doesn't bother them, no problem at all. And for most winters, you should be absolutely fine. It's only gonna be those extremely cold winters where it's below freezing for more than a week, something like that. Or if you live right up in Scotland in a very exposed location, that a plant like this is gonna need any kind of protection. For most UK gardens, in most winters, you don't need to do anything to it. Just look out your window and enjoy it, appreciate it through the winter months. So that's always good to know. And secondly, the easy bit. I think it's all well and good having a plant that's tough, but if it's got very demanding requirements, if it needs a lot of a certain thing or a very specific location, it suddenly becomes a tricky plant to grow and a tricky plant to thrive in your garden. And again, the good news about waggies is that they're very easy going and very easy growing too. I don't know if they're the same thing, but I'll say them both. A plant like this, it doesn't need a lot of sun and it also is happy in a shady spot too. Personally, I like to put them in either partial shade or full sun. That way the crown stays more compact and you get these leaves looking the absolute best. But the reality is you can grow it in deeper shade, you can grow it in absolutely full sun and it should be absolutely fine. As long as you don't let it completely dry out, it doesn't need a huge amount of water and in most garden soils you don't even need to worry about feeding it too. 
So really, it couldn't be any easier. As long as you sort of give it a bit of care that first year, like any plant really, make sure it doesn't dry out, maybe give it a bit of feed just to help it through its first summer. From that point then, you can just leave it to do its thing. It really is as simple as that. The next great thing about waggies is they actually grow quite quickly. Sure, they're not going to motor away like a tetrapanax or bamboo would, but in the context of a palm you can grow here in the UK, they certainly don't hang around. And that means you can have a plant that you can enjoy watching grow, sizing up nicely. It's not something you need to plant out for future generations. And it also means that you don't need to spend a huge amount to buy a large one in the first place. Unlike the Jabea that I showed you, that plant's already 20 years old, you need to buy an established one to really have that instant impact in your garden. And even that is going to take 10, maybe 15 years before it really starts to size up. Whereas the Waggies, they grow nicely even when you plant them out as a small plant. In practical terms, I bought a batch around a few years ago in maybe two or five litre pots. I potted those up into 10 litres and again probably two years ago into 20 litre pots. They've grown nicely and they've got to around a foot and a half tall. And that's the size that I planted them out in the garden here because I know they'll continue to grow well. They've already got a decent level of toughness and they're a plant I want to enjoy watching grow over the coming years. They're a plant that looks attractive while it's small. They're almost like a bonsai palm. But once you start trunking, they can potentially grow up to a foot of trunk a year. So they definitely don't hang around and it won't be that long, maybe 10 years, which might seem like a long time, but it's definitely going to pass anyway. In 10 years time, you'll have a plant with real structure that will bring that exotic vibe to your garden all year round. The next benefit to growing wag is they're quite a compact plant. Unlike say Fortunii, where each frond can be a metre and a half long, they can take up some serious room in a border, especially when they're quite short, they've still got those big fronds, you can't grow a lot of plants near to them, and they certainly need the space. Whereas a waggy, even when it's mature, it won't have a bigger crown than about this really, this is about as big as it gets. And you might find if it's grown somewhere full sun, quite exposed, it's even smaller and even more compact than this. So it's a great plant for smaller spaces, smaller gardens, front gardens maybe. If you want a palm, if you want something that brings that exotic vibe, but you don't have the room for like a huge bamboo, a massive gunnera, then this is a great plant that's got a very predictable growing habit, but doesn't take up a serious amount of space. Now, obviously with palms, they're not a tree, so you can't chop them back. They've only got a single growing point. You can't chop that down lower down the trunk and expect it to regrow. So it's always gonna grow in a vertical dimension, but that crown itself is never gonna spill over and take up a huge amount of space. So it also means you can plant them in groups. You can buy several small ones, plant them relatively close together, and you'll get an amazing display that'll look great regardless of the weather. That leads neatly on to the next benefit about growing waggies. Because that crown's smaller, each individual frond is shorter, they've got a real sort of rigid feel to them, they almost feel like a small plastic fan. Because of that, they're very wind resistant, certainly compared to the standard Fortunii. So what that means is, if you've got a garden that's a bit of a wind tunnel, if you live in a more exposed location, if you live somewhere where the winds absolutely howl through every autumn, if you've got a Trachyapus Fortunii there, it'll look tatty in absolutely no time. The leaves will get bashed around, and what that means is the low ones start to go brown and yellow a bit quicker in my experience, whereas the Waggy looks absolutely pristine. So it's certainly a plant, if you want to have that exotic look, if you know your garden doesn't get that cold, but wind is an issue, something like this, it's gonna move a bit, but it's gonna look pristine all year round, which makes it a fantastic choice. One thing you might find, especially if you bought a large waggy recently, is that some of the fronds, they're actually quite large and they're more susceptible to damage, especially in that first year. Well, that's just because that plant has likely been grown in a more sheltered location, and when it's brought to your garden, those fronds just can't cope with the conditions. But what you'll find is, like any plant, it will adapt, and those new fronds coming out of the crown, they'll be shorter, more compact, and more able to take on the conditions. So although it might look rough that first year, it'll look pristine in no time at all. So waggies, easy to grow, they can tolerate a wide range of different UK garden conditions. In terms of soil, moisture, light, they're very tough and very adaptable plants to pretty much anywhere. They grow reasonably quickly, but they're never going to become unmanageable. And because that crown doesn't get too wide, they're great for smaller spaces, smaller gardens, front gardens, and also for packing those other plants in around them. 
and because that crown doesn't get too big they're very wind resistant and they'll stay looking great all year round but my final and fifth reason yes it's probably a bit of a cop out but i think it's probably the most important one and it's how attractive they look i think they're really a stunning plant for any kind of exotic style garden they've just got that look to them that goes well with all the other exotics and that's equally applicable in summer when these go well with the big leaves You've got these smaller dark green leaves that contrast really well with the delicate leaves of the ferns, the big leaves of the gunnera. They look fantastic then. And in winter, when it's stood by itself, it brings some real structure and that sort of full 365 day evergreen interest to your garden. They look great with frost on them as well. That sort of delicate white pattern into the leaves, it really sets them off nicely and you're not worrying about the plant either. So I think really they're my top recommendation of a palm for any UK garden. Let me know in the comments if you've got another one, if you've got wackies yourself and how you got on with growing them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.